So obviously you saw the title and the thumbnail of this video. There is so much to go over and to unpack. I don't even know where to start. Yeah, well, we've been dealing with this for about a year now yeah. and there's no real end in sight. So we decided to take things back into our hands and, you know, take charge of the situation. Yeah, we really need to fill you guys in on just everything that's been going on. It's It's been a lot of moving parts and complicated, but under the direction of lawyers, we need to give you a quick legal note. The information shared in this video is based on our personal experience and is not intended to cover every detail of the ongoing dispute. The following account is not exhaustive. Certain dates, facts, and information may have been omitted due to the ongoing nature of the case currently before the courts. The content is presented for contextual purposes only and is not intended to be defamatory or slanderous towards any individual or organization. And with all that out of the way, the people that installed the pool can go f because f the f that I've and I wish but I don't know that the legal note covers that. <laughs> In order to We're not lawyers if you can't tell. <laughs> In order to properly tell this story, we need to go way back. So if you've been coming along every Sunday, you know all of the little steps that have went into this project the last few years. As much as it may seem that there isn't this grand plan of where we're going, there very much is. So or that we're bouncing around all over the place. Yeah, it's just that so many of the projects are interconnected. So we had this dream of building not only off-grid, but we wanted to have a home that was completely self-sufficient. So all of our heating supply, all of our electricity, everything was going to be net zero and we wouldn't have to spend money every month on our heating bills. So from the foundation to the plumbing to the insulation, all of those little pieces all pooled together with that goal, no pun intended. <laughs> and so while we've been working on these other little projects along the way, it's been because we're trying to figure out the next big step towards the house, which is the main project here. Yeah, and then as we learned more about, you know, sustainable living and off-grid and all of that, we found new technologies that could really help us achieve our goals, but also had a really cool benefit. So you may remember a few weeks ago when we installed those evacuated glass tubes that superheat water. Well, one of the byproducts of that system is you have to have something called a dump zone. So basically what that is, is all of the surplus energy that you have, it needs to be distributed somewhere or it will literally blow up. That system is always on. It's not like a light switch that, or an oil furnace mm -hmm. that you can just turn off when you're not using it. It always will be producing heat and circulating that hot glycol. So we need somewhere to place that otherwise like Tyler yeah. said it'll melt down which is perfect because w one of the solutions for that type of a system is to have a pool and we were like wow that wasn't a part of the plan that would be pretty cool if we like it was a it was a dream a dream yeah i remember being on vacation and drawing out yeah. a pool we were like i was trying to convince tyler that we could do it out of cinder blocks and build it ourselves but it just oh seemed, yeah i remember yeah. we were having lunch and you were like we, sh we just got out of a plunge pool? I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, we thought it would be a really cool thing, or I did, but it was just outside of our comfort zone and it didn't really have a utility to us. Yeah. It was going to consume energy, not help us with like maximizing the energy usage. But once we found out about this evacuated tube system and how it needed a dump zone, we were like, oh my gosh. Like, written in the stars. Written in the stars. <laughs> like it could not be more perfect. So. Then, like Todd said, we were like, oh, the cinder blocks, like building a pool ourselves. I don't know about that. That seems like a little bit too out of our comfort zone, which yeah. looking back, yeah. if only we, if only. Well, there's also the complexity of the site. So the land, the only flat part is right by the power building. The rest of it, we're on a hill, the entire property. Yeah. So putting a pool in was going to be difficult. That's why cinder block seemed like a good option because it was a freestanding pool that didn't need ground around it, which yeah. we're like, perfect. Like it's got its own wall. It's going to hold the water. Let's do it. <laughs> so in the spring of 2023, we found out about this really cool product they install it like it's a, it's a turnkey thing it's not like a diy situation for us and we were like given how important this 
pool is going to be in the house's overall mechanical system and just like the functioning of the property we're not going to do anything with this project like this isn't not going to be a diy situation so we made the decision to hire this company that set us off on design and figuring out the size of the pool and the logistics of getting it here from craning it over top of the house because it was built in sections ensuring that all of the groundwork was done properly so that the pool had a nice solid base to be sitting on and wasn't going to, you know, topple down the hill. And keep in mind, none of that is our responsibility. That's all included in the cost of going with this company. It's all built in to the price. So we noticed things starting to kind of not really be going according to schedule. Keep in mind, this is the spring of 2023. When we started the project, we made 100% sure with them, this needs to be done by the end of the summer because if it's not, we're not gonna be able to activate it. We're not gonna be able to continue on with the rest of the project into the fall and the winter. Yeah, the reason for that is the pool needed to be in place in order for us to build the deck around it. You might be like, well, that's just a deck, but the deck actually has more purpose than just being a deck. As you might recall, the staircase tower was at risk of falling because the side next to the house wasn't attached properly. So we had to put a beam underneath, but to hide that beam, we've decided let's like build a big deck all around it. So that beam couldn't go in until we were ready to do the deck, which we couldn't do until the pool was done. And the whole mechanical system of the house is reliant on the pool. So there was a lot of moving parts, a lot of like components that were just like, it felt really stressful and overwhelming. So you might remember almost a year ago, it was in October of last year, we shared the video with you all of the pool being lifted in and you know, all of that happening. That actually happened two months earlier, but we didn't share it with you because we had spent those two months fighting with this company to try and get them to finish the pool. So all they did was lift the concrete in, that was it, and we were basically done for the year because they couldn't come back and finish it. We don't want to put a company on blast. We don't want to, you know, get into the mudslinging because if we can come up with a resolution offline and, you know, move forward, that to us is it's the better way to go about things. That's why we've never ever made a video like this on our channel, but it's been a year now and we haven't made any progress. So once we shared the video with you all in October of last year, we had already come up with an agreement with the company that by April 30th of this year, of 2024, they will successfully install the liner. And at that point, once it's all done, we will pay the final invoice and we will be done. Of course, we weren't happy. It wasn't a great experience, but it wasn't ever our intention to share how frustrating it was because we knew in April, 2024, we're gonna have the pool, we're gonna get the mechanical going and it's gonna be smooth sailing. And um, we took, so we thought. like we tried to find the silver linings in it. We obviously were frustrated and down and that's where the lake kind of came about. So that seemed like it came out of left field to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then, but that allowed us to, you know, recharge over the winter because we were just so tired and defeated. It allowed Charlie who had a TPLO surgery to recover and heal in a warm environment, not a dome in the middle of the woods. Cause make no mistake, this is a glorified tent. It is very cold in here in the winters. Yeah, you can keep it warm, like that heat pump there up on the wall. You can keep it warm, but it uses all of our electricity from our solar array because obviously living in a northern climate, the sun sits lower, so we're collecting less energy that time of year, but it's the time where our demand is the highest. And there's no insulation so. in here, so when we're constantly putting heat into the dome, it's going out at an equal pace. So yeah. as soon as your heat source stops, it, it starts cooling right away. We could do a whole <laughs> another video on that, but that's a story for another day. So. Yeah, by, by spring of 2024, we were like, this is gonna be amazing. We're gonna continue on and it's gonna be perfection. So a lot of you noticed that the pool suddenly went from being this concrete shell to looking kind of beautiful from a distance. It did anyway. Unfortunately, the liner was installed incorrectly. So 
all of the edges were like razor sharp jagged. The actual strips of liner were cut incorrectly. It was just a mess. And for context, the liner that we went with, we originally just wanted to tile the pool, but the company pushed us in the direction of the liner because they supply it versus the tile we were going to do ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we went with this liner because we wanted something that was rigid enough for Charlie and Eddie to swim and hopefully squirrel um, in the pool because we know that they're both golden retrievers. We're not going to be able to keep them out no. of it. So we wanted something that wasn't going to have a bunch of holes in it from their nails. So that's why this was a great option. The plus side of it is the way that it's supposed to go together is it's called seam welds. So instead of your pieces overlapping and being glued like this, they go right next to each other and you have a seam underneath. So you don't ever see that seam. But welded, like supposed to be beautiful. And obviously, as you can see, this is not at all what the liner looked like, which we were really frustrated by. As you can imagine, with all of this going on in the background, it has taken a pretty significant mental toll on us and being able to unpack those feelings and emotions not just to each other has been has been really important because you and I like when we're talking together I, I like find to we gab. we like to gab but we have a tendency to vent especially when it's a shared frustration and BetterHelp is the sponsor of this week's video, but quick disclaimer, even if they weren't, it would be a service that we would be using. Having someone that is completely removed from not just this situation, but our whole life to be able to speak to, it's it's been such a gift, not just as us as individuals, but for our relationship too. Yeah, and I just love BetterHelp because it has taken away any excuse for me not to be in therapy. I've been in therapy for years, not because I'm sad or depressed. I think that's a, Yeah, it's a big misconception. Yeah, it's just, it's nice to have someone to just talk to. Sometimes you're just having a bad day and just wanna to talk to someone that's not yeah. in your personal life. And the excuse is gone. I can do video chats, I can do phone calls, I can even message my therapist in between sessions. It's such an amazing service and we really think that it can help you or someone in your life as well. Totally. So make sure you head over to betterhelp.com slash Tyler Todd to save 10% off your first month subscription or you can use the link in the description box down below or use this QR code here. I think I'll put it in between us this time. No, you're not going to put it over here? <laughs> now where were we? Yeah, <laughs> let's dive back into this. We were going to like try and you know do some finessing with it and try and like buff out the really sharp parts because there were parts that were sharp enough to cut mm -hmm. you but to us we just wanted to move on but then we had a massive rainstorm and obviously it being a pool it filled with water like probably like maybe a foot -ish. yeah but as soon as it started filling it was draining and we out were of the four corners yeah and we were like what like what is going on like I mean, the one job of a pool is, <laughs> is to hold water. So we were super confused and then did a bunch of investigating of the liner and where the liners met, the pieces of liners, there were so many parts that weren't completely fused that water was escaping beneath the liner and then escaping out the concrete. Which is now two issues. One, yeah. the liner is supposed to be watertight, but the basin itself, the concrete walls, was supposed to be watertight as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got two areas that are now leaking that shouldn't be. Like, two, yeah, two failure points. And then we had some pool techs come to like do the hoses and all of the like measurements that we needed for the mechanical. And they pointed out, oh my gosh, these are the wrong fittings. And like, it was just mistake after mistake. And we were getting... So the fittings, just yeah. so everyone understands what it is, because. Well, I mean, we now feel like pool experts from <laughs> learning so much over the past year, but the fittings are the circles that go through the walls. So the pipes are on the outside of the pool, connect to these fittings. Mm -hmm. And then inside of the pool, based on whether it's a jet or a light, that's where the jet attachment would go or the light would go into. So say you have, say your pool is designed and engineered, by the way, to have a light in this area, well, that needs to be either threaded or not threaded. And where that was supposed to go in was the complete wrong fitting, which it can't fit. There's no way to do it. And it needs to be a watertight seal. So then once we were like, okay, all this is going on, it was brought to our attention that we had to backfill around the pool. So 
Keep in mind, we went with this design of pool because it's supposed to be freestanding, like the cinder block pool we were looking at. Mm -hmm. And that was going to give us almost an infinity feel to the pool, looking over the hill, taking in the forest. And keep in mind, this isn't like a miscommunication or a detail that just, you know, got left out. The company actually created designs for us based on our exact location. Like, representatives came out to the land, walked around, took photos, took measurements, and created a rendering that we've shared with you all before of what the pool was going to look like. And then sold us the material to cover the outsides of those exposed walls. So then Todd and I are like, okay, we've got all of these issues, the liner's leaking, like we are starting to panic because this is going to be a lot of money that we're out. Like, how are we, how are we going to get this back on track? What are we going to do? So we started looking at, okay, we can do a retaining wall around the pool. So we had costs or quotes done on those. We had three different quotes. Twenty-four to thirty-three thousand dollars for just the retaining wall. And so obviously that was out of the cards. So we ended up going with 27 dump trucks of fill that Mel, love Mel, would take God from the driveway, them. drive down around the house, and drop them in. 27 dump trucks worth of fill he moved for us. Which was Yes, it was cheaper than the 25000 for the retaining wall, but the reality is it was not at all the look that we wanted. Like, it just was not at all what we signed up for, and it was still really expensive. So at that point, we looked at what our budget was going to be remaining for the pool and what we signed up for a year ago. We could maybe afford five gallons of water to put in. Like, it just, <laughs> it just completely spiraled out of control, and... The more reflecting that we did, we felt like we were kind of like backed into a corner. We felt like we couldn't share it with all of you because there's so much there's so much layer and, and detail and context that unless we came completely clean with it, how would anyone understand? And it just it felt like um it felt really overwhelming. It did, and like what? Did we, it just made us question everything. Like, was this whole project too ambitious? Was it, I don't know, too pie in the sky? We just, yeah. it really got us down. And it's the yeah. first time we've been at this project for almost five years. And we've shared with you when we've had issues with the build and we've never ever sought legal advice because we've always been able to work through things on our own mm -hmm. with the company and come to a good understanding of a path forward that is not, it's, you know, it's everyone's getting something and everyone's compromising on something, but that isn't the case with this company. Yeah. And unfortunately we did have to hire a lawyer to help us navigate through the best path. Yeah, so making that decision to go speak to a lawyer. If you're ever, by the way, in a situation where you feel stressed or you're like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what my options are, let me tell you, I wish that I had have went to speak to a lawyer in so many other situations in my life, but we've never done it because we're both not litigious people. It's just, it's not in our nature. We've said this to you all before in, in another video, but the thing about getting advice from someone who actually knows their stuff and what they're dealing with is it, it does provide a level of comfort that we are not the villains or the bad guys for paying for something and expecting to get that in return. Like hearing somebody else say that mm -hmm. is a really important thing because it can come across like, oh, are we complaining? Are our expectations too high? Is it our fault? Should we have done something different? When you sign a contract with a company and you say, you're going to give me this and I'm going to give you that. If they don't give you what you're paying for, that doesn't make you difficult. That makes you like not settling for mediocrity. Well, it's like I said to you, we signed up for a pool. The pool is leaking, so it's not really a pool. So that would be no different than when we bought the tractor. If a guy named John brought us a three-legged deer and said, have fun with your yard work. Like, we wanted a tractor, not John's three-legged deer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a good analogy. Like, when you, when you really strip it all back, the bare minimum of expectations for a pool is that it can hold water. And 
our pool doesn't do that. So like, I think Plus, it is, there is the safety concerns of the liner. If yeah. water is getting underneath it, what is going to happen? Is there going to be mold, algae, like what's going to go on under there, the jagged edges? It wasn't what we signed up for. So with all of that being said, once we found out the issues with the liner and the retaining wall and all of the other issues that we just mentioned, and we spoke to a lawyer, that kind of got the ball rolling on how are we going to fix this? What is the solution forward? And all we wanted was just come fix the liner. Like the we'll write the check tomorrow. The other things are frustrating. Yes, they're annoying and whatever. But like, we need to get this pool running because we need to build the deck. We need to run all the mechanical. Like we said, this pool isn't for just recreation and leisure. It's a mechanical essential of the actual build. Yeah, like we can. We're coming around to loving the area that's backfilled because. What are we going to do? Keep crying over it for the rest of our lives? Yeah. Like, we're, we're coming up with ways to landscape it and make it blend in. It's we're finding be, the silver linings. It's going like, to be beautiful, you know? It's going to be great. It's going to be perfect. We're going to forget all about this. We just wanted a liner. So we, we being, I don't know, naive, thought, okay, like, a company sells a product to someone that the company can see is defective. The primary reason of the product doesn't, it doesn't work. So surely anyone that's reasonable would say, oh, we did bad on that one. Like, don't worry, we'll come, we'll fix it, no problem. That was, what, six months ago yeah. that we've been waiting and it's just the legal back and forth and there's no, there's no movement, nothing's happening and these types of things can take years, yep. years to resolve. Yeah, basically, we made the decision that the only leverage we have is that final outstanding balance on the invoice to fix the liner and hold their hold them to task yeah um unfortunately they took it another direction and have filed a lawsuit against us because we made the decision if you didn't if you didn't do what you were supposed to do you, you we have a defective product we're not going to pay the final invoice until you come and fix it because like Todd said, that is the only leverage. So now that it's six months later with a leaky pool and a lawsuit pending against us, it's time for us to take over the situation and do what we should have done from the very beginning and done it ourselves. We don't have years to continue yeah. waiting. We've already given up a year of our life trying to resolve this. Our lawyer has said the courts this can take years to settle so we need to get this system operational we need to get the pool done luckily we're able as you know we've got the deck done like a lot of the big stuff is mm -hmm. is done except for the pool and the mechanical with and the reason being is we didn't want to touch the pool we didn't want to do anything to like the actual interior it's the evidence uh, yeah it's exactly like we didn't want to cut out the liner and deal with all of that until there was some sort of a resolution but the reality is we're going to film every bit of the process so we can all clearly see the mistakes along the way and i don't enjoy having to go behind people and fix their mistakes and clean up other people's messes it really pisses me off so do you know what pisses me <laughs> off even more though being like feeling like i'm being held hostage in my own home like the thought of going another winter and not being able to like have the container home fully functioning and fully running is it's a non-starter and especially we share these videos we make the choice to share these videos but it bothers me when the interpretation out there is that we're incompetent or we don't know what we're doing when the reality is we're trying to be tactful and not rip people a new one or explain the full story because of like legal repercussions or whatever and like i'm just i'm tired and I'm done and we're moving on and we're like we're we're getting ready to do a fucking cannonball into that pool oh like... <laughs> I'm telling you what it's just been like I feel a lot better actually like having this off my chest and being able to share it with you all because even though we're creating all of these other videos that we have in the last year this major thing has been going on behind the scenes that we haven't been able to share with you all and it just that chips away 
or for me it does anyway. And at the joy that we've been feeling here, but honestly, since we made the decision a couple weeks ago to really take charge and, you know, just do it ourselves, I feel... Lighter? Lighter, mm -hmm. reinvigorated, motivated. Like, we are on the home stretch of a dream that has been years and years in the making, and I'll be damned if I let someone at a pool company with an ego rip that happiness away from me. Yeah. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, like Todd said, we are hitting the ground running. There is so much work to do. Grab your suits, get some goggles, and bring your own towel because we're going for a pool party. Exactly what we've said all along. The liner is not holding water and is leaking through. That is all mold. Pink mold. Until then, we'll see you Sunday. Bye. Bye.